Today we're going to be learning about meiosis. So as you probably noticed by now, you don't really look like the people around you. For example, my husband Drew and I, uh, we, we don't look the same because that'd probably be a little bit creepy. We have different hair, we have different eyes, and we definitely have different heights because he's like a foot, foot taller. This variation of characteristics is the result of two sex cells from our parents combining during sexual reproduction. So that's what we're learning about today. So here's a really quick vocabulary re review. Remember, this is the example of a human cell. Um, today we're going to be focusing on our nucleus, um, a little bit on our nucleolus, and then definitely using our centrioles. Remember, centrioles are important for um, cell division, which is actually what we're going to be learning about today. So remember that DNA is our genetic material and we find it in the nucleus. So this right here is actually just a close-up version of the nucleus. Uh, so when DNA is actually like all curly, as you can see I'm drawing right here, it's called chromatin. Um, chromatin is uncondensed DNA, uh, meaning the DNA hasn't been squashed together yet. However, DNA can actually condense into what are called chromosomes. You can see right here, that's a condensed chromosome. Um, and chromosomes are really important for what we're learning today. So humans actually have 46 chromosomes altogether. Uh, so our DNA condenses into 46 different chromosomes. We actually get 23 from mom and 23 from dad, which gives us a total of that 46, or 23 pairs. The chromosomes that make up a pair are actually called homologous chromosomes. Uh, they look a lot alike. They have the same length. They have the same centromere position, so this right here is the centromere, um, and they have similar looking arms, and they carry the same genes that control the same inherited traits. For example, the gene for whether or not you can roll your tongue, I'll pause while you all try to roll your tongue, will be located at the same position on both homologous chromosomes, for example, right here. Uh, however, although these genes code for the ability to roll your tongue, they might not actually both code for the same thing. So, for example, this one from your mom might code for not being able to do it, while this one from your dad uh, might code for you actually being able to do that. And how that affects you, we're going to be learning in a different lesson. It's super important that each generation has the same number of chromosomes. In our case, our parents have 46 chromosomes, so we also have to have 46 chromosomes. Uh, so organisms such as humans, like us, we make what are called gametes, which are sex cells that actually have half of the chromosomes. So for a human, a gamete would have 23 chromosomes. Um, we use the symbol N to actually represent the number of chromosomes in a gamete in a sex cell. Uh, if it has N chromosomes, then it is considered to be a haploid cell. Um, in us, our sex cells are haploid and therefore have n chromosomes, again, where n equals 23. This gamete will then actually combine with another gamete during fertilization. So I'll show you right here. We are combining. Um, so this is called fertilization, which we're actually going to go over more in a later lesson. So fertilization. Uh, so you can now see I actually have just added uh, n plus n, which means I'm ending up with 2n. If something has 2n chromosomes, then it is considered to be diploid. Di meaning 2, kind of makes sense. Uh, this cell right here, when I have two gametes that just fused or came together, that's actually called a zygote. And the zygote is the first cell of uh, an organism. So that's, we all started out as zygotes. So just to kind of make it all make sense, um, in this example, I actually had n equals 3 because I started out with 3 chromosomes in each cell. I added 3 plus 3 or n plus n and I ended up with 6. So we're assuming that all of these organisms in this species should have 6 chromosomes. So this is the sexual life cycle of humans. Remember, we're learning about meiosis, which is the process of making gametes. Uh, which are the sex cells that have half or n chromosomes. Meiosis cuts the chromosome number in half by separating the homologous chromosomes um, in the pairs. Uh, so we can see here in the sexual life cycle that the male and the female are diploid or n, or sorry, have two n chromosomes, and they each undergo meiosis in order to create gametes. Uh, in the female's case, we've got the egg, and in the males, we've got the sperm. And both of those actually have N uh, chromosomes because they are 
gametes, they are haploid. Uh, the two sex cells then undergo fertilization, as we can see right here, and they make our zygote, which is the first cell of a human being. So this is a zoomed-in view of the cell. Uh, we're so cool that we're just going to ignore all those other organelles in the cell and just look at what's actually happening in our nucleus. The very first stage of meiosis is actually called interphase. Um, it comes before meiosis, actually. Uh, and it's split into three different stages, uh, G1 phase, S phase, and G2. So let's say right now this is a new cell. Uh, so it's going to undergo the first phase, which is the G1 phase. And in the G1 phase, this new cell is just getting bigger. It's doing its normal cell functions. It's kind of like a teenager on summer break, sitting there doing his other thing, getting fat, you know. Uh, this cell actually has 2n chromosomes, so here we can see that 2n equals 4, because I can count them 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, remember that in humans, uh, 2n equals 46, so a normal cell would have 46 chromosomes. Uh, that's kind of our magic number. Just so you know, uh, this you wouldn't actually be able to see these individual chromosomes, like I have them drawn out here, um, because if you were to look at it under a microscope. Uh, right now, the DNA is actually all still uncondensed and squiggly, like I'm drawing here. And remember, that is what's called chromatin. I was just showing you what the chromosomes are doing. That way, you can kind of get a clear picture um, of what the DNA, what's actually happening to the DNA. So here is actually the next phase. Uh, it's called interphase S phase. Uh, this is where each of our chromosomes actually replicates to create uh, two sister chromatids that are connected still at the centromere um, and they still contain the exact same information for each side as there was before. Um, we can see now that the chromosome actually has its characteristic X shape which you're going to be seeing a whole lot. The idea of sister chromatids is actually really important uh, because you have to keep in mind that the chromosomes you just saw they just replicate in themselves so each side still exactly the same, still exactly the same. You have to also keep in mind that this is a chromosome and this is the chromosome. They still only equal one chromosome. Eventually, uh, these two different sides are going to split up and then each of those will become their own. So then it'll become one plus one equals two. But right now, um, when they're attached together, there's still just one chromosome that has two sister chromatids. This is in our phase G2. Uh, at this point, you can see all of my chromosomes have now replicated to make their sister chromatids. Keep in mind, like I said before, the DNA is actually still uncondensed, so I actually can't really see this under an, a microscope, and it's still, this is all just called chromatin. I'm just showing you the chromosomes so that you can get a clear picture of what the DNA is doing. So right now the cell is preparing to undergo meiosis. Remember meiosis, as you can see here, actually has two phases. It has meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Uh, and you'll see how that's relevant as we continue the lesson. This is the first stage of meiosis 1. It is called prophase 1. Right there. Uh, this is the stage where the replicated chromosomes become visible. Remember before, in interphase, they were still just this squiggly chromatin. But now you can actually see the chromosomes. In prophase 1, the homologous chromosomes, remember those that are the same length, have the same centromere position, you get one from mom, you get one from dad, those are now actually pairing up together. So keep in mind that these chromosomes still consist of two sister chromatids, like that, so they still have that X shape. Um, as prophase 1 continues, these centrioles actually move to opposite corners, um, opposite poles, sorry, of our cell. Uh, and they start to make what are called spindle fibers, so you can see these spindle fibers. Um, and these are going to be important later on. You can also see right here that my nuclear envelope, so the purple part around my chromosomes, is actually beginning to break down. So this right here is called the nuclear envelope and it is breaking down. So we're still in prophase one, but I need to tell you about an important concept, which is called crossing over. 
Uh, this is the process by which chromosomal segments are exchanged between homologous chromosomes. So this creates even more diversity. Diversity is a really important word um, for sex cells. So remember in, the, in biology, diversity gives a species a greater chance of survival. So we can see here that our homologous pairs actually cross over with each other. They literally cross over. Uh, they switch genes. And then as you, they come apart, you can see they've created a little bit more variation. So this concept right here, remember, it's called crossing over. So this is the next phase, which is called metaphase 1. Uh, in this stage, the chromosome centromeres, so remember these central parts, actually attach to our spindle fibers. Uh, you can see our spindle fibers right here. And uh, you can still see that the chromosomes they each have their own sister chromatids, right? And they're actually lined up as homologous pairs. Uh, keep in mind that in metaphase one, these homologous pairs are lined up at what are called the equator. I can draw this equator for you. And this is important this is an important distinction from what we'll see later on. This next phase is called anaphase one. Within anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes are now actually getting pulled apart from each other. So you can see they're getting pulled away. And remember that my cell actually started with 2n chromosomes. Remember for humans this is 46. Here it's actually 4. Um, so our homologous chromosomes have now separated. So there's actually now n chromosomes at each corner. So n equals 2 and n equals 2. Remember, in humans, n equals 23. Um, so you can see that we're actually cutting the number of chromosomes in half. But keep in mind, each of these chromosomes still has two sister chromatids. So 2SC, two sister chromatids. This is the last stage of meiosis 1. It's called telophase 1. In telophase 1, the homologous chromosomes, each still having our two sister chromatids from the X shape. Um, these are now, they've reached the cell's opposite poles. Each pole now only has one member of the original pair of the homologous chromosomes. Uh, key, you should keep in mind that because of the process of crossing over, the sister chromatids within a single chromosome may no longer be the same. So you can see here, I've got a little bit of blue here. They're now different, um, which is good because this means increased variation. In telophase 1, a process called cytokinesis occurs where our cells are actually split apart, They're split down the equator. Uh, the spindles have broken down, you don't see any spindles anymore, and the chromosomes are actually going to uncoil. So again, now we all, all that we see is our chromatin, and uh, the two nuclei are made. So you can now see we have our nuclear envelope that surrounds both of our nucleuses again. Uh, the cell has now divided. We can see that both cells have N chromosomes, and both cells actually have, um, or all the chromosomes in both cells still have sister chromatids. So yes to sister chromatids. And remember that in this case, N equals 2, but in humans, we know that N equals 23.